All right, team two. For some reason, team one seems like it's always A and S, and team two is always OSP. It's an interesting phenomenon. Okay, let's see. CCR up here is deploying. Oh, congrats. CCR is deploying up here what I'm going to guess are mass drivers. Probably line ships, I'd guess two, plus uh, a long range radar. Down here, this looks like. Maybe a monitor group in the middle. Oh, somewhere out there is one of the starter fleets. That's a monitor plus two radar ships. And then Glowworm is uh, another starter fleet. I believe that's the Azerite, I believe. Well, we'll take a look and know for sure in a second here. Not Azerite, Kyanite, I think it is. And that is a pair of 450 line ships plus an all plasma monitor. Hmm. Maybe it's been adapted slightly. Don't remember that. This is Task Force Garnet, and that is what a plasma cannon looks like. Not the other thing, which was a mass driver. So take all that advice from last game and apply it to these ships. And the radar tugs, that one's not been changed. This is a 450 and a 250 Acello. Checking for the jammers. Don't see them on either side. Uh, a capping shuttle. And this is, yep, there are the mass drivers, as expected. The targeter and a capping shuttle. All right. For ANS, we have a size three hybrid. I guess. Yep, size three hybrid CL. That's paired with another one. Double size threes. That could be dangerous. This is, I'm gonna guess, a trio of gun CLs. <laughs> wow. I've never seen that before. He has two CLs merged. <clears throat> hmm. Definitely going to post this one later. Can't wait for the fusion memes from this. <laughs> wow. Okay, anyway. Uh, to go with that, we have a rail array. These are armed with backup cannons it looks like Ratapi Rat this is a connoisseur who's actually changed the designation the from DD to DDG and rounding that out we have an E-War frigate to go along with a 450 BB Ooh, and a little 250 cannon on the back that's cute <laughs> All right, as far as deployment, CLs kind of slowly moving up here. D got cap, C got cap. Mines going out. This this is nice. Uh, I always like to see mines being aggressively deployed in this fashion. Now ANS, even if they see that they're there, it is going to be a pain to come out. And especially in a position mm -hmm. like this, one thing you can do as a container player is use your minds to set up a zone in which PD has to make a decision. If they push up into this and they start firing their PD into that and you launch your containers at the same time, 
they have to make a decision whether they task their PD on the mines and stop that from killing them, or they task it on the containers and stop that from killing them. So it's really good if you were going to play a container ship to watch for that, and when you see them pushing, just go ahead and throw throw containers out. I mean, you have plenty of them. But unfortunately, it looks like instead of falling for the, his trap card, they're going to push across on the other side. Uh, which is bad because, ooh, that's pretty. The enemy is oh, oh, what a shame. Need more track correlators. Yep, needs more track correlators to tighten up that targeting so they don't all miss like that. Oh, one hit. This is really unfortunate. Um, this this Bloodhound LRT without that backup equipment is going to struggle to get something accurate enough that, oops. That's not good. That they can actually fire at. And they are awfully close. Oh, here comes some size 3 hybrids. The enemy secured zone Atlas. I don't think there's overly much amount of point defense on these. They do fire some AMMs. Let's see if they're able to connect. Oh, and counter rails coming out of the rail array. And the AMMs are spent. Here comes some more. One. And they are weaving. They are going to go straight through this point defense and slam in oh not dealing a whole lot of damage that is interesting hmm not sure I would have expected a, a lot more damage to come out of five S3H's than this but I don't know. Looks like the rails continuing to fire into this ship. Awfully accurate fire. I'm wondering where they're getting the uh, locks from. Or maybe they just got lucky. Yeah, that seems like that was the case. As now the rails are missing. Looks like a missile strike got off on this 450 line ship and completely gutted it. This is the type of damage I expected to happen. That That is the other size 3 hybrid uh, light cruiser. Actually done so much and taken out its CIC. That is a dead line ship. I believe this also had missiles on it. That is a huge blow. Half of his uh, fleet killed by that one missile strike. And that is effectively shut down whatever flank this was going to be. I'm not seeing much PD. Not that it mattered with size 3 weave. Here comes another strike. These AMMs are not 
able to deal enough damage to take these out in flight. And they miss. Oh, in this case, they've triggered on the decoy ship, missed it, and whiffed entirely. Revenge, sweet revenge for this ship. Wasted a huge the enemy is securing zone dagger. size 3 hybrid strike. This ship is down to... Only has one third of its complement remaining. It looks like it was firing in batches of 12. Meaning it has three shots and it missed on one of them. And the first one didn't do really the critical damage even I expected out of it. I suppose enough missiles, maybe they got cut down by point defense at the very end there. Looks like they had 30 missiles and they're firing waves of 10. Did manage to kill this line ship. Uh, the rail array taking some pot shots at this monitor, which is unhappy about it, but can't do very much about it. And these Acellos, likewise, are... The enemy secured zone dagger. Really just biding their time. Uh, this is exactly what you want to do as the OSP if you have the point advantage. Don't go chase um, the ANS. Don't go push into huge amount of cannons at range. Even these light cruisers, uh, if you try to run them down and they kite you and back away, they can do enormous amounts of damage uh, to Acellos, to monitors before that range is secured. So the OSP especially with weapons like these monitors. They are ambush predators. That's what they want to do. And if you feel like you're not able to do that, uh, just be prepared because things are probably not going to end well. Uh, these mass drivers kind of having to think. Finally opening up on this battleship. Battleship, not a wonderful target to be firing these mass drivers at. Um, they don't penetrate very deeply into the hull, so you can take out a turret, you can take out some radar panels, maybe some point defense, but you're not going to be able to really kill a battleship with this type of weapon, or even really hurt it significantly. Um, But hey, uh, if you have nothing else to shoot at, it's uh, definitely a good target. Here comes that plasma. This is what I was mentioning. Hey, Ike. Welcome. This is what I was mentioning before. It's so slow at very far ranges. It uh, It's very difficult. Here, here is an excellent target. Firing these mass drivers at these destroyers is gonna be a lot more effective. Here comes the plasma, getting some hits. You can see here all this red and blackened area. That's where the armor is being destroyed. And now the expected follow-up. Well, it looks like some fire is being split. I would assume it, it does appear that the monitors aren't okay there there goes the plasma so firing the HEHC ammo at targets before the plasma hits uh, will cause them to do almost no damage we saw that it wasn't until that plasma hit that this finally actually started getting hit so it's always a good idea um, if you're commanding this fleet to fire the armor piercing or even the HE um, the 100 millimeter HE ammo will do work against destroyers. 
uh, don't go direct to the HEHC until you've seen glowing red melted armor. Uh, looks like the final S3H volley has been fired at these mass drivers. There is a way to change your point defense settings to fire more AMMs at incoming missiles, but it is a bit fiddly. Uh, so no judgment there, just kind of some information if you see, oh, they finally do have a good connect. Well done. So these mass drivers pushing up this far, it's kind of an interesting decision. These uh, monitors have 40 centimeters of armor. It's the same amount as the ANS Axford. And these small caliber weapons, that means they're forced to fire their armor piercing variants uh, at them in order to, do, to deal any damage. And the monitor from this small caliber weapon really can take a real beating before they take catastrophic damage. So you can see this monitor has been soaking all of this small caliber fire. It's taken some damage, its thrusters are out, but its main weapons are still firing. It's still in the fight and so it should be no problem for that monitor group to finish off that DD. Um, these gun CLs meanwhile looks like they've been dueling with these, this pair of Acellos, which are stationary. So one thing of note here, if you have the option, you should not leave a, sti a ship stationary like this. At the bare minimum, there is a command called orbit that you can make your ships drive around in a little tiny circle. And just, just the fact you know, like anything else, if you're stationary in a game with that has projectiles flying around, uh, that's not what you want to be doing. So at least orbiting, at least, you know, zigzagging, zigzagging back and forth on evade, doing something to avoid fire is going to make your ships live a lot longer. All right, overview. So those CLs are being... Kind of bullied, actually, by these uh, crossfires and these acellos. They've both taken, or all three of them, this one is mission killed, all three of them have taken a lot of damage. They're, they're stationary for some reason, which means they're taking even more damage. They're not really in a good position <clears throat> so one thing uh, there is a command in the game called heading and for many many ships but especially the light cruisers you want to use that heading to keep your bow pointed towards the enemy if you take a look here if we're kind of on side profile you can see how much of the ship is visible Right, And especially of note, you've got the juicy engineering section with its critical reactors and engines and things like that. If we move over here, over to the front, we've actually shrunk in the amount of surface that can be hit. Ooh, that was pretty. We've shrunk the amount of surface area that weapons can hit by at least half, maybe more than that. And instead of the juicy reactors and everything you have these other components in this nose that while it would suck if they got killed you know this is where your weapons are you can keep the ship alive so that's one tip definitely you know in most ships but especially the voxel try and keep the nose towards your enemy You can see here, this ship is diving towards A, but it's getting hit by 450 and 250 from the Acellos. 
looks like this 450 line ship is going to get in on this action. Uh, it's in a crossfire. A situation like this, even pointing the nose at the enemy wouldn't help because you're getting shot from two different angles. That ship is going to die rather quickly. Looking around the rest of the battlefield, all of these CLs are... That pair is dead. This is the S3H, which is out of ammo. CL. What happened to the last one? Oh, that's what's diving on A. Okay. So I suppose in this case, this player has said, I'm out of ammo. I can't do anything. I'm just going to rush my ship and try and cap something. So fair play to him uh, for that, you know. Uh, at least he's playing the game and not quitting. So kudos, kudos for that. I didn't realize that was the missile carriers. Um, let's see, is this ship still mobile? Yes, barely. Lost a huge amount of thrusters. But it can fire. And this battleship... It is providing fire support, but unfortunately, at this range against a target this small, most of these rounds, well, <laughs> as I say that, it looks like he's killed enough thrusters that he is able to hit this. So, interesting. That's actually probably going to be the end of that monitor group. This one's hanging out. Is it stuck on a rock? Not sure. The Acellos are going in. Looks like they want to get behind this rock. And... I assume that is to give them some cover against the only real threat left on the ANS board, which is this battleship. All of the S3Hs have been fired. All of the gun CLs are dead. All of the rail DDs are dead. ANS. From behind, this battleship is probably too far away to actually affect the cap game. It can get some kills, it can stay safe, but for all intents and purposes, it's withdrawn from the match at this point. OSP, meanwhile, they have total control of the center of the map, total control of their three points. They can easily come in cap D with something. Not that they need to, because they're up by 300 points. Pretty much in a, our uh, OSP victory at this point. Um, so in hindsight, let's see. As far as fleet selection, uh, I do like the OSP's lineup. It's well-rounded. There's a little bit of everything. And they had what they needed. Especially since there are a lack of of small ships on the ANS side. There isn't really anything uh, they can't counter, which is fine and good. Uh, the This rail array possibly moved a bit aggressively into the middle. They found themselves in a three, no, four-way crossfire from every fleet on the OSP side. Even if they had been able to engage just the monitors with their smaller caliber weapons, it might have ended in the same result, but definitely they were going to get destroyed by moving into the middle. The enemy secured zone boxer. Um, these CLs attempted to push at the same time. Unfortunately, they ran into an Acello and did not have the maneuvering and uh, movement that they needed to. Uh, three gun CLs can take the fight.
to a pair of Ocellos, but you really need to carefully manage your heading, make sure they're nose on, dodge shots where possible, and also make sure that your fire is on target. Um, let's see what else happened. Uh, this battleship... I'm going to say I don't have any major complaints other than if you're going to play a battleship and you decide to back off uh, and do fire support, I completely understand because that plasma was in mid and if that plasma had splashed onto this battleship, it would have died uh, very, very quickly. So... It is a little bit unfortunate. It got a little bit outmaneuvered by the time the monitors were in place. They already create this zone of extreme danger for the battleship to go into. Unfortunately, the escort ships, the, um, the CLs, and the, um, the rail DDs weren't able to dislodge those monitors in time. Um, well played to this mass driver uh, player. They definitely were assisting their team the whole time, but especially they managed to survive 30 S3Hs and not take really just destructive damage. So. A lot of times you see people build long-range ships, they decide to skimp and not defend them against missiles, which is a, is a big mistake in my opinion. So kudos to them for actually bringing the point defense and making sure their ships can stand up to missile fire. Um, the monitors played fairly well in that they got to the location they needed to be in and they did their damage uh, at least versus those uh, those DDs um, I don't want to nitpick too much just give like some basic over thing as always on a map like pillars it comes down to the capture points and to get the capture points it's all about taking the middle you can take the middle and hold it, or you can get the cap advantage, which is what they did, and set up fire so that if the enemy team wants to come and retake a point, they're going to have to come into your lines of fire. And that's exactly what happened. By having the point advantage, securing it early, setting up the crossfire, setting up everything in range, uh, OSP glides to victory. Losing one ship to an S3H strike, some capping shuttles, and this one monitor group in return for obliterating the ANS team. There is only this cannon battleship left, and it has no chance. The enemy is securing zone dagger. And OSP actually manages to get a line ship all the way across and capture D. Let's see if he makes the turn all the way around to fire some 450s before the end of the match. Probably not. Banzai. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Oof. Actually, point blanked him there. Ouch. Oh, this monitor's still full health. Is this a. It is a. Oh, it's an all-plasma. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly why. I see this a lot, that 
uh, ships with high caliber weapons are bringing plasma. And I don't know why. Maybe someone in chat understands better than I do. <clears throat> because there's really no reason if you're firing 450 millimeter weaponry that, that you care about the ammo. Or the, the armor, not the ammo. Some more plasma dodging. It's looking pretty cool. Might be able to... Yeah, so this ship it looks to be doing what I mentioned earlier, where you kind of zigzag or orbit or something without pushing forward or backwards, just dodging fire. Yeah, I think this is in orbit now. And because of that, this plasma that's being shot at it is absolutely no way to hit. Even these 450s will have a hard time hitting a ship moving like this. Yeah, here come those plasma. Absolutely no chance at this range. This is probably around uh, 8 kilometers, I guess. Where are we? Oh, we're at sea, so maybe 9 kilometers. Even though there's technically 12 kilometers worth of range on plasma, if you just do some basic maneuvering uh, like this, there's no way. So GG, well done. OSP victory.